Thank you, JP. Uh, thank you all for joining us here. It's so precious to just be able to come together and share this presence, share this love and joy. And that's what came to mind as I was coming in here was that, that um, what has been come to known as church really is a it's just a state of mind. Years ago I had a, a conflict in my mind around religion and uh, the Holy Spirit just whispered to me, religion is peace of mind. And it just washed away my conflict, I just, whatever that conflict was. I, I was still thinking in terms of a concept or a theology or a belief or something. And the Spirit said, no, it's peace of mind. That's what church is. That's what prayer is. That's what meditation is. It's not really a structure. It doesn't have a structure in its purest essence. Um, but just like uh, when you're learning to ride a bike, some of us, you've had uh, just a loving parent running alongside of us, uh, holding onto the bike and then letting go when, when it was time to let go and experience what it was like. And oftentimes we crash still with that method. Um, I think I tried that method, but I, I actually use training wheels. <laughs> which is kind of <laughs> awkward and funny as you're going and your bike is like <laughs> you know, pedaling sideways. <laughs> you know, they, they give you a little leeway in there. But, but, but even though I was using the training wheels with my first little bike down in this little subdivision called Ravenwood, this little street, um, I didn't intend on using the training wheels the rest of my life. And some of you may have even had braces, but when you wear braces, the intention is not that you will wear braces for the rest of your life. And um, I feel like even some of you who seem to wear glasses, uh, you should have the same uh, mindset. You don't have to believe that you'll wear them the rest of your life. Um, and certainly those of you who have found spiritual texts like A Course in Miracles or inspirational po poets like Rumi or whatever, you shouldn't plan that you will hold on to them necessarily for the rest of the, your life. They will just be there as long as they serve. And then they're there to catapult you into a state of mind, which is glorious, peace of mind. And it's the same with religions and churches. I tend to think of church more as like, um, it's more like a description of your state of mind. I think church was meant to be, in terms of its essence, it's more to be a, a description of your state of mind. So somebody asks you how you're doing, it could be you're ch feeling churchy, just like peachy keen, you know, <laughs> really good. You're feeling really good. Most people don't think of it that way because it's so ingrained with so many meanings which are all based on history and we're all actually getting more inspired about letting go of history and getting more into the present moment of the I am presence. So it's a very vibrant feeling we want to share. Nikita, I just knocked on her door this morning and I said, what are you feeling about church service? She said, oh yeah, I was feeling you and I would share that today, so even though we've just got here. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, I'm back. <laughs> I just feel like you know, in the mo sometime during the night, uh, I was, I had this experience like the, the whole thing was just like one journey through the mind, and it's like I don't even know where I am, it's just it's all mine. And technically, I got here, we got here uh, sometime last night. And uh, s sometime in the early morning, I just had this feeling, this I'm back, I'm back, whatever that is. And, it's, and it was all about this uh, state of mind that is very, very vibrant and 
wanting to extend and it's involuntary. You can't even hold it back and I really felt like this wind like within me and it was all like and I could like really feel that that one uh, that it cannot be controlled like it's just gonna take me where it's gonna take me and it's all it'll just take a full surrender it's not even my choice and uh, and then in the morning yeah I was just uh, I didn't even think about it but the thought came in I think it's David and I that are doing this uh, Sunday service and then David walks in, uh, in the room and he says it's you and I that are uh, doing the Sunday service and it's just and I remember and I was like I love Sunday services I love <laughs> them it's like the whole almost like this memory again here it's like I know this place this is like a, pl a place of just pure extension that there is never a problem that there's never um, nothing to really deal with or to need about it's just really a place of just wanting to extend and the prayer is always here like help me uh, help me give it all away spirit how do I give it all away just help me not wanting to hold back uh, even a little bit nothing take it all take me like take it take it all and uh, and this is the state of mind that we're invite we call it uh, the strawberry state of mind and we do have um, we do have a festival coming in but the more and more the feeling it has nothing to do with the festival it has nothing to do with the event as if it's uh, the event it is really the state of mind and I know like all of us we've been in the state of mind for actually for always I, w I wanted to say for a long time, but always, <laughs> like in this place, it's like nothing else is real, nothing else exists. There is nothing else. I want this and something else like that. There is, a, there is no such thing as something else or someone else, somebody, even people. Like it's not a place of people, it's, it's just a place of the whole merge true like um, true merge with the spirit and which is which is the prayer of the heart so it's just really good to be here and good to be like good to join in this vibrancy yet again and it like I could just feel it it's just so this like that's what rules here this is uh, this is like you know this place it's under no rules but but gods but really this spirit the wind is really in charge of all that and the more and more we talk about like how involuntary it is and just um, the excitement of it just really to be able to surrender to that wind within and then it has nothing and accepting the really the full permission to go with it just not to check in not to really to even ask someone is this okay am I feeling right can I really do this but really just jump on this ride within and see where it takes you and it's like before I came <coughs> here I woke up one day and I couldn't breathe the feeling was like <gasps> like I couldn't even breathe that it was taking uh, like something was really taking me over and I knew that I had no control of it and then next thing you know I ended up here and it's just a full trust that it's it's just a ride. It's like it's a one amazing ride, and and then yeah, it was really it was really fun because yesterday we were um, at the monastery and we were um, we were ready the whole day. I was like I was feeling I'm ready, I'm ready. I came to David I'm like David, I'm ready. Like when when are we going? I'm ready. And so like and David said I'm ready too. So yeah, let's yeah, it'll come in. And so at some point we were, uh, I think it was the three of us, um, at the, like, at the parking lot, and we were ready and packed, and we were like all, okay, we're ready. And the feeling, and I start, I remember this um, scene from Inception, <coughs> like, and it, because we were waiting for, um, for a car, like, or a bus, we didn't even know. We knew that some, something is gonna. We were, we were to be ready and something is going to come pick us up and take us to the next, to the next place. And I had this, I, I had this scene from Inception where uh, I think it was the, 
ball of Leonardo when she says, you're waiting for a train that will take you somewhere, but you don't, but you don't know for sure, because you don't, you're really trusting. But it doesn't matter because all that, all that matters is that we're going to be together, right? And that was exactly the feeling and the even like the swiftness of it. It's like you don't know for sure, but like take me, take me now. And that pure feeling of just, I'm ready, like I'm just, I'm ready. Nothing else, nothing else to say, not even knowing ready for what. It's just like, I'm ready, I'm clear, I'm with you. Let's go, and it's amazing. And the thing is, it's like it was all about the flow, what's in the flow. And it's really not about people, like really isn't. It's just really answering that call within, like I'm ready, just saying, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. And see who joins you. And it's always such a treat, because you never know. And it's always like, you, you, oh my God. Like, it's, all like, it's, all, it's always the feeling, it's like, uh, it's all the loves of your lives. It's like, really? You don't even think about it, but it's always such a, almost like such a surprise. It's always like, wow, wow. It's like, it's a, like once again, it's just such an amazing journey. And it's so spontaneous. It is so spontaneous. And it has nothing to do with the more, like, the more we go, it has nothing to do with form. It has nothing to do like going from one place to another. It's all about this amazing movement in the mind. And it's just really opening, like it feels like new kingdoms are being opened all the time. You know, like just a new, like discovering new it's like kingdoms of heaven, which is all part of like the kingdom and the whole thing is like oh it's real it's real it's real we're only and the feeling that we're only we're going one way and there's no stopping and sometimes it's like oh my god <gasps> take a breath and then there's that excitement oh my god nothing's holding me back and I'm going there where I've always wanted to go that like this is the right this is um, the only place I want to be the only place actually the more you go with it, you realize that actually I don't really need to go anywhere because I'm there. But meanwhile, while pursuing yourself on the journey, it is still fun because there's that excitement. I'm going to the place, finally. It's like you've got the golden ticket. You wait. Someone, uh, we even spoke a little bit um, about uh, uh, patience and waiting and grace, waiting with spirit and just really trusting. And then finally, spirit invites you, and it's like, come, your turn, it's your time. Your time has come, come, here's, uh, take my hand. And you just really uh, accept the invitation, and it's not like, once, like, it's not an invitation from a person, from somebody. It's the nudge within that feeling, oh, I know, I know this one, I know that you can't help but answer. And it's like, yay, it's like getting that golden ticket that you've been waiting for all your life, always. That's the only ticket you want. And it's even willing to uh, face uh, thoughts of missing out on something because there's that commitment. I only want this ticket. I don't want to go anywhere else. And until, like, until I absolutely sh know that this is like this is the ticket uh, like I'm willing to say no to everything else until there's absolute um, surety that this is that's all I want and then next thing you know you're being taken and it's uh, and once again even though it's not about people it's not about uh, like it's not about people but the experience that you're definitely not alone and it. it's not a it's not a lonely journey although it's a journey through the mind and it's, it is about accepting atonement for yourself. It's not a lonely, it's not a solo journey in a way. It's a journey of vibrancy and um, complete support from the whole. Mm. Yeah. And we're all on it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and so yeah, this is kind of the celebration I just felt in the morning, just celebrating the like that. Here we are, all of it. Like we're all on this amazing journey that 
that is so dear to your heart that is that that we just like that that is what brought us here this is the call of the heart and we're in it together and just to celebrate that like not even not, not, not much else to say just to celebrate this joy really and that there's no need to wait and the swiftness of it and yeah, <laughs> yeah. there's never a dull moment ever really on this you just never know yeah yeah and for years i talked about you know, we can't bring the truth into the illusion and and sometimes people can say, well, what does that really mean? I mean, what's it's spoken about so often, but what does it really mean? It just means that you can't, you can't bring eternity into time. You can't bring the eternal into the temporary. And there comes a point when you just have to acknowledge that, that the eternal doesn't fit in time. A lot of us, have, even who came through Christian traditions, or Judeo-Christian traditions, you know, the most we would hear that kind of resonated was, you know, sometimes bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, but it's clear that Jesus was not talking about a kingdom of heaven that really could be brought to earth. He would say things like, my kingdom is not of this world. He didn't say, my kingdom is on earth. And then we read things, be in the world but not of it. You know, I'm calling you out of the world. Oh, oh that's, ooh, that's pretty radical, but be in the world but not of it. In the end, we have to see that, that the present moment is the closest approximation to eternity that this world offers. And we have to come to an admission that while we have a lot of future goals and ambitions and strivings going on, and we're efforting to try to make a better life in the world, that we're, at, we're not really actually following the teachings of Jesus Christ. You can't really mix the Kingdom of Heaven and Eternity with linear time. And, and yet, it's not like Jesus is saying, okay, in order to reach the Kingdom of Heaven you must be lazy, uh, or you must come into inertia, <laughs> or <laughs> something like that. He's basically saying, you know, be still. The vibrancy is in the moment. The vibrancy is in the spontaneity. The vibrancy is, is not trying to find consistency in form. Not trying to find continuity in form. Uh, not trying to find um, the everlasting in the temporary. <laughs> you can't find it. The whole human experience, what we call a human being, is really nothing more than the attempt, you know, to find love in form, or to find eternity in time. So it's this surrender or letting go, and, and there can be a moment of a gasp, like a fear of, oh, I'll lose myself if I, if I just let go into that. But amazingly, everything is still flowing just so perfectly when you let go of the quest to try to make something of this world. And you really let go from trying to make anything happen in the world or figure anything out in the world, then all is abundantly provided because it's all, it's all your mind. It's all your mind in, in alignment with God. But you're not trying to control it at all. There's an absolutely no control over the world. And it gets, you know, that would be impossible to think of yourself kind of in a work setting without any sense of control. You know, there are aspects of control that are part of the job, the work setting, the occupation, the career setting, certainly even with parenting, you know, to, it seems almost unrealistic to think of, try to think of parenting without any control whatsoever. You know, but you're talking about that hands-off, laissez-faire style of parenting, it's, but it's beyond that, it's, it's letting go of the identities, all the identities of this world that still try to bring the love 
into form. And there are many, there are many institutions and traditions, relationships, family, you know, there are things that are celebrated, there's still roles and concepts that it's celebrated and rejoiced in as if the love is in them and yet love is eternal. It can't be shrunk down, it can't be shrink wrapped. You know, you can't you can't objectify love. And that's why I think when Nikita was saying feeling the vibrancy, it's like, oh look who shows up. It's whoever shows up when you're feeling all that bursting love. Whoever, whatever shows up, you're just in full gratitude and appreciation. We were all just sitting on this little deck and yeah. Nikita had her little pink polka dot <laughs> luggage that she's had just waiting there like she didn't have her thumb out or anything but she was just <laughs> sitting out there in this dusty little like outpost. deck outpost and then Laverne rolls up in her blue jeep. It's like okay our ride is here <laughs> and then when we yeah. followed we we drove with the burn. The burn said, I've been wanting to drive you guys for a long time. Now's my chance. Three years. <laughs> Three years. She waited. <laughs> we were waiting in the parking lot. She showed up. and But it's, it's not about the form, but it's more just about when you're in that place of joy and spontaneity and gratitude, then whatever shows up as part of your perception is completely included yeah. in that. Completely. Yeah, it's like you can trust that because when there's a, when there's such deep um, clarity uh, of the prayer of the heart, like when it's so obvious in the face that it's like, oh, I'm just here, I am, I'm ready, and whoever shows up spontaneously, you can just fully trust. There's just allowance to just trust that it's so. This is all of it is the answer to that prayer of the heart, to that uh, to that state of mind. I'm ready. I'm just ready, like a hundred percent. And it's like everything that shows up is really in support of it. And the, and I was just saying how now it's um, it has to be like that. It has to be like it has to, it has to come from the way. It's like I want to do this, even if it's like. Uh, getting someone a glass of water or giving someone a ride or going somewhere, you know, going on a tour or talk. It's like, I want to do this. I can't not do this. This is like the prayer of the heart. It's like, I can't help but extend this. This is involuntary. Like there's no, uh, no place anymore. I feel for even asking someone like even come and help me. It's kind of like, you want help you know where it is like come to the only and it might even be like uh, the experience might be that there uh, it could be a bit of facing the rejection it's like I'm asking I'm asking I'm asking and I really want help and I'm extending it yet I'm kind of not getting what I want something's just not fully there and at some point, it's like uh, you'll hear from the spirit. It's like if you really want help, you know where it is. Then come to me. Like, get, like, come to me. Surrender to me. And there's nothing to ask for. There really isn't to ask for. Everything is perfectly given. And it's so humbling too. It's just so humbling. It's like, of course, of course, that's where all the help is. Of course, I, nothing is needed and nothing it's like how can it's like if there's such a deep call mm -hmm. how can something be missing how can someone be missing because it's like if you're uh if you're going for god mm -hmm. and spirit is like that's the only function that actually that's the only function that can be fulfilled how can spirit not provide everything for it mm -hmm. everything how can that like how can it be and so it's just really amazing and it's really humbling and it's always so great to be reminded and it's just, it doesn't get old. And it's always, please remind me, I do want to know, remind me. It's, yeah, and uh, the other day I, even, I had again this experience that everything was brand new once again. And I felt like I just, I just met everyone, I just met David. And technically I've been here for two years, exactly. 
but the experience was that I just met David and I was like, oh my God, how did I even end up here? What did I do? What happened that I'm like, I'm, I'm here finally, like David is sitting in front of me. Oh my God. And it felt like everything just like got wiped away. And again, like, again, I'm at the new start. I'm at the new, everything is brand new. And I don't know where, I don't know where I'm going in a way. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just trusting this, like the call that brought me here. That's uh, the same presence that's going to take me forward. And it's just really completely, complete allowance to only trust that to only and nothing else and ask for no other advice and it's amazing and it's like again like this feeling of how it doesn't get old and it's not and it's not about form newness and freshness is not in the form it's really a state of mind that everything is brand new all the time it's not about changing and matching people and getting like I feel uninspired I need something new to come in or someone to bring me some kind of a spark. No, it's in the mind. It's in the mind and it's, it's surrender is what makes it all new. It's deep surrender and it's always like I had, I had this experience before that something just got like complete, a whole world, a whole realm. And I'm just like, am I done or something? I guess maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm just like, I'm just done with the journey. I'm almost ready to, sign out or something and then I had this I, this brand new experience is given and I was like yay the journey goes on <laughs> yes like something got completed like forgiven in the wor in the way and then the journey goes on I'm still being taken and and this is like I was saying this is my favorite state of mind like I was walking like I was so high in the past few days and I didn't even know what you know what's what, like what's active and what's restful, but it was just like one major uh, mystical experience and I was, and then I was like, I'm married to it, like I am. This is what I wanted to be married to and it's almost like I wanna, actually I was waiting for the opportunity to say it, like, like I am married to it and it's like not even, like that's it it's like i'm married not even wanting to marry like i'm married to that and it's like i like whenever i come everywhere this is what comes with me i can't like you know distinguish it's like there's nikita and then there's that and like you know i'm i'm that i'm just that and it's like that's what i am it's like married into the experience of that so, yeah. Going like a bride of Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah. That's the state of mind. Mm -hmm. and it, you can just shine it and share it and there's no requirements for it. It doesn't come along with any conditions. There's no contract. There's nothing you have to sign. It's something that you are. Yeah. And that, that, that's the final, there's three lessons of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit wants you to just experience the final lesson. The first lesson is important, you know, the second lesson is important, but it's all, the, it's all about experiencing the third lesson, you know, because there isn't a fourth lesson. <laughs> that's, that's the fun part. You know, first he says, come on, come my way, to have, give all to all. Learn what it means to give as God gives. Give, 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 to have, give all to all. Get into the practice of giving, giving, giving. It will wash away all fear and doubt and lack and scarcity. That's just the first step. And then to have peace, teach peace to learn it. Yeah, it's a good second step, you know. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah, peace of mind, peace of mind. That's right. I've got to teach peace. I've got to teach peace over and over and over in all these countless seeming situations that are part of the human experience. To have peace, teach peace, to learn it. Good, good, good. What's, where is this leading, you know, where is this all leading? You know, and, and when you finally get into the third lesson, and you go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper into it, like, okay, what's the crescendo, what's the, what's the final thing? You know, you, you begin to discover, 
and ultimately you must discover in an instant that that having and being are the same, that they are identical. So you don't have anything of this world because it's your very being that's what you have. You have Christ, you are Christ, you've always been Christ. The Christ idea, the pure Christ idea, not, not even the man of Jesus who seemed to walk among all the brothers and sisters 2,000 years ago, but the actual I am presence, the living Christ. That's why we call it living miracles. You know, it's not, we're not interested in miracles, historical miracles. It's like those are, are beautiful symbols, you know, parting the, parting the Red Sea, turning water into wine, and the dead to rise, and the, the sick are healed, and, and all those things are beautiful symbols, but, but they're really symbols that point toward the state of mind. It has to be vibrant, it has to be living, to be what it is, and then you are that, you are that. I am that, I am that, I am that. No matter how many times it has to rinse your mind of, of the little particulars that have been made up and invented, no matter how much rinsing has to occur, I am that, I am that, I am that. And all we do is we witness to, it's okay, it's wonderful to give yourself over to that. You know, you need not experience sacrifice. You, you will never come into this experience and say, well, yeah, but I had to give up. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. There is no giving up in having and being what you truly are, and always have been. It's, there's no sense of sacrifice or giving up. That's just the ego's belief mm -hmm. that somehow it's going to require some sacrifice, and it's just not. But you have to be convinced of that. You can't just affirm it, you have to know it to the very core of your being. That nothing was taken away, ever. Nothing was ever taken away. Vibrant, happy. And also you can't know the future, you know, let all things be made new. In the twinkling of an eye, in the twinkling of an eye, let all things be made new. It's, it's just giving your full desire, your full attention to that. I know when I had this experience back around 1991, it seemed, in, in the parable of David in linear time, then I just, I was like, okay, I, I was just going to take off. I didn't know where I was going to take off to, but I knew I was impelled to just take off. And then very quickly, I was guided to this use car lot and this little gold Chevrolet Sprint came in, it was kind of a uh, little three-cylinder car and I said, okay, is this part of it? Yeah, yeah, well, you'll, I'll show you and then it turned off this big travels all over the United States, but, but every day was a new day, every day had a new horizon, the people changed, you know, day in, day out people changed, the places changed, the, the lesson was the same, but everything was like changing. There was nothing to hold on to, there was nothing to grasp. You know, take no thought for what you should care, what you should wear or eat, you know, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, just going out like being shot out of the cannon into the unknown. And you know, like I will tell you day by day, I will let you know, I will guide you, I will lead you. And I do remember that just seemed to go on and on and on and on and on and on and then like quite a few years later, I think maybe like um, like maybe like 17 years later, then I remember I was in Cincinnati and we were all there and praying and Jason was there at this little peace house and Kirsten and Kirsten kept hearing this one word come in and it was church, and uh, I'm just a traveling mystic. Church, I hadn't, church, I hadn't heard that word for the longest time. 17 years of just everything changing in my life, different places, different faces, didn't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next. 
And then, I remember she mentioned it to me and she looked over at Jason and she said, I'm, I'm hearing church, I'm feeling church. And Jason said, I don't hear that. I don't feel that. But that was like an introduction. And interestingly, um, after that, a, a while, um, a man called me who was from Thailand and he called me on my cell phone and he said, whatever you do in this lifetime, do not ever, ever, ever get involved with the church. It was like a warning. Um, like, there's nothing good that's ever come from a church. <laughs> like, there's nothing good that comes from whatever, Nazareth or whatever the thing was in the Bible. There will, they, there will be nothing good that will come from this. Nothing good in history has ever come from this word. <laughs> Please, David, whatever you do, promise me. The voice said at the other end. I think it was a former priest uh, from Thailand or something calling just to warn me. And it was like, you know, it's like, well, it's a word and it's just, a, just another symbol among all these symbols. And I thought, well, it's like, really, it's not my choice. I'm already surrendered over to this idea that whatever symbols come, they're just going to come freely from the Holy Spirit. And they come without any attachment. And they're just temporary symbols that get used for a time. <laughs> so there was no sense of, I had no sense of doubt or fear. I was I almost just feeling like it's not my, it's not my choice. I think I made a choice seemingly years ago to just listen and follow and when I made that choice, I gave up the ability to say yes or no to certain symbols. <laughs> you know, if it drops in, I can't go, no. You know, there's, I, I gave up the ability to say no to any of the symbols. It was more of an all-encompassing embrace to, okay, Lord, whatever, 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 whatever. I can, I will handle, I will use, I will fully allow the flow of the symbols to come unimpeded. And I think that's, you know, that's maybe why having, we're having a fun Sunday service, is because there's a flow there, but there's no identification with any earth meanings, or any attachment to any of the symbols. If you're not attached to the symbols, it's a pretty glorious ride. Mm -hmm. And the minute you get a little bit attached, mm -hmm. To any of the symbols, it's like hell. Mm. It's like hell. Mm. And we don't need hell. No. <laughs> and that's not a choice anymore. And even because sometimes we, we may not even know if there's attachment, but spirit, like spirit knows everything and be like, okay, God, 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 lift it. And it's like everything you'll be. Because I had this experience, like things were falling, again, like things were falling apart, like there is no tomorrow. It was like everything that I, I thought was going to happen wasn't, wasn't going to happen. And, and I was, and, uh, and it was scary, but then I knew it was the answer to my prayer. And the answer to, and the prayer was just, I said, like, I could really hear it. I just only want to be in the moment. I can't even think. And I, I was already in the state of, in, in the place where I was so happy and I was so home. I just, I'm like, finally I'm here again, like home. And any thought of going somewhere or moving or even some like future event, it was held to me and I, I was, I couldn't bear it and I was crying and I was like, oh, I, I don't know what to do. I can't, I can't, I can't live like that. And, and so I was just praying for a spirit. I just want to, I want to stay here. Why would it's, it's, it's horrific. Why would I go from home anywhere? And so everything just got lifted up and then I heard, I was just like, oh my God, wow. And then I heard from spirit, you see, nothing exists. Everything is gone except for this. Like, like I love you. Like nothing done. Like done. Say just say a word. And like I said, like it's not even a choice to have any attachments, anything. It's all for. And then, uh, and it was very clear. I heard it's because everything is in the mind. There was a choice ma made. I want to say a long time ago, or I don't know when. But the choice is that I want I I want to put nothing before God. 
and every so often spirit would remind me he, and it, it, even if there's like if there's a feeling something's taken away and spirit's like no remember we made the choice together with me like nothing before god that that was like this is the agreement and it's and it's like this re mm -hmm. like almost remembering oh yeah i remember that choice and a much mm -hmm. And then much like on a deeper level, on a different level, not on the level of form, not like personally, Nikita decided that, but on a much higher level, I was like, yes, I remember the choice that having nothing, uh, no priorities before God, and it's and and then trusting and surrender to that, and from there on, not even trying to like, I don't I don't go through the day trying to determine. Am I putting this in front of God? Am I putting that? I don't need to think about it because everything is naturally being orchestrated that nothing prevents the flow, only in the flow, and it's, it's involuntary. And nothing, over and over, I've been really, um, I've been watching how nothing can, like, nothing, not, nothing can stand in the way. Even, like, there's no need, like, spirit can always Reminds me that there's no need to even protect, you know, uh, the spark, mm -hmm. the spark of Christ. Because I, I, you know, I talk a lot about the spark and being the spark and how dear and nurturing that. And uh, and then there's even a bit of I have to protect it. It's very you don't even have to do that. You know, you need to protect it because it's it doesn't really need your personal protection let me take care of it let me you just trust you trust me and you just keep on going and there's no need to fight there's no need to determine what's most helpful for it what's not it's like spirits got it and would you just because of that choice made uh, on that on that level for wanting nothing but that <laughs> Yeah, because a lot of us were raised with traditions about this thing of temptation, but really, what what is temptation but comparison? If you could just boil it down and see that, that just comparison is temptation. And any time your mind mm -hmm. even is drawn to this crazy idea, this tiny mad idea of comparison, you know, if you if you just stop and and are still a minute moment you can always hear you know the answer because it's in there it's not going away what is the same cannot be different and what is one cannot have separate parts and there are is no comparison in love love makes no comparisons there's nothing to compare in oneness but that's that presence what is the same cannot be different what is one cannot have separate mm -hmm. parts it, it literally precedes the, the crazy idea of comparison, and comparison is, is quite, if you even would try to give your mind to it, you will find your energy go down, you will find contraction, you will find, it turns concrete suddenly, the whole world isn't dreamy anymore, it's suddenly concrete, suddenly specific. Because suddenly, you know, there's this belief that idols are possible, but it's, they really aren't. You know, it's not when the Bible says, hold no graven images before the Lord thy God. It's not, you know, a, a prescription of how you should live. It's not a, a prescription for living as a human being. It's basically a description of there are no graven images before the Lord thy God. So don't try to hold on to something that's not there. You'll just put your mind in an illusory state of feeling contracted and stuck. So you see that this is really not a journey of, you know, like the ego always says, what do I have to give up? Oh, what have I got to give up to be holy? Oh, boy, that sounds boring. Oh, that sounds constricting. You know, to the ego, freedom sounds like imprisonment. Mm -hmm. And that's the trick, you know, to, to, it's always saying, don't go for it, you know, keep your autonomy, keep your comparisons, you know, keep your fears and doubts, as if that's what makes you alive, when actually that's the very block to life. There's no life in it at all. Yeah. 
So I think that this is the invitation, you know, this is the living church, this is the living miracles, you know, this is the state of mind that, that, you know, you can just cast all your cares upon Him, for He careth for you. You can, you can just live a life of spontaneity. You can live a life of involuntary miracles. That's what it means to be a miracle worker, is to be in the miraculous state of mind, and just let that state of mind extend from you and through you. But it doesn't mean that it's going to look a certain way. You know, it doesn't mean that there's some kind of a, a form that you have to, that you'll ever arrive at. You'll never arrive at a form. In one sense, it's very undefined. You, mm -hmm. you, it's like, okay, oh yeah, yeah, this is how I am, this is how it feels, this is the state I am that I'm married to, and it doesn't um, have a form it, to it. Yeah, it doesn't have a plan, definitely not a plan. There is no, and definitely not even knowing at this point what's helpful, what's not. Yeah. Even if you would get a flash or a premonition of something that seems to come, you know, it would always come with the Spirit saying, now forget about it. Yeah. <laughs> Premonitions are dangerous yeah. if you actually hold on to them and you think it's like a personal snapshot of something that's to come. It's, they're very dangerous that way, but if you get a flash and then you remember, oh yeah, I can forget about that too, then, yeah. it, then you're safe. You stay in the safety of the moment. Yeah, yeah, and actually I've been thinking about it like a lot. Again, every so often it'll come to mind and like, um, psychic abilities, even knowing, having a vision, premonitions, and it's still somewhere, it feels like as if it's helpful and valuable, and uh, more and more, it was, it's not, like my experience that it's not helpful at all, even knowing a little bit ahead, it really um, it hasn't worked out for me too <laughs> 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 no, really. I remember, remember at some point I was like, I know nothing, everything just comes in and, and I'm just in it and I don't even know what's going to happen five minutes from now. And, and that just feels the call and I don't need to know, but I'm kind of, I feel like I am aware of everything, but, but it's not in the form, like I'm, I'm personally aware of what someone's doing. And then at some point I was actually given this time where I seemingly, I knew I had a time what was going to happen. And I, th and I was like, well that's new, and I was like, I don't even know what to do with it. And I, I'm like, I don't even know what to do with it. Okay, so I know then, this is it. And, uh, and yeah, I realized at some point it didn't work too well for me. And it had to, like, everything just had to be lifted, like just lifted up. Because I, I felt like I started something inside. I started breaking and I started really, I, I felt like I wasn't living. Like really I wasn't, I wasn't living. There was some kind of a format in the mind that I even felt like, well this is helpful or something. There's some kind of helpfulness in it. And uh, at some point I couldn't, I couldn't even move further and start, and I really started praying and I joined with, David and I said I can't move another step and I don't know what it is but I can't move like I can't like so <coughs> it's just not in alignment with with my heart and next thing you know everything was just gone wiped away and it, and I was back to I don't know what's going to happen but then I was living I felt like oh, I'm living again I, and I'm living and I feel like the presence is speaking, although not not through words. I wasn't feeling like I'm speaking in, like in words, but even when I'm in silence, I feel it's, it's it's speaking, it's talking to me. I feel it. Everything is vibrant. It's like I was back, like back in my homeland. And so, yeah, yeah. And so, uh, to me, I'll say if someone ever asked me, are premonitions, uh, are they helpful? Should you know, psychic abilities? 
right now, I'm going to say directly no, not at all. Only the present moment is helpful. <laughs> it's just like uh, only being in the present moment 100% is what's most helpful and what that's where life is and everything else is just not my realm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. the Bible of the man who's, who's told that, you know, if he mm -hmm. buys this piece of land, you know, it'll be everything. So he sells everything he has for that. And really the present moment is like what you're being asked by spirit, you know, give up everything else and just go for the present moment. That will bring you the joy, the happiness, and the safety. And some of you might know the story of like this, this particular wing in this particular room, uh, um, it didn't come furnished. So mm -hmm. that whole wing of this Canvas Metaphysical Center came furnished. So I went out on a shopping spree with Lisa, and in one day we furnished the, the, the entire wing, the living room, this, all the way back through all the bedrooms. We just walked into this, um, it was like a warehouse of a furniture place. It was massive and it had all these things marked down and everything and we just started working with the guy. We said we'll take two of those and you know, with these kind of, oh those chairs, yeah we'll take four of those and yeah we want some of those. We just were going around like boom, boom, boom and he was laughing and he had, let me get a pad and pencil, you know, he was trying to keep track of three of those, one of those, we just, we just went through this whole thing. At the very end they had a special running, they said, um, you know, bought all this stuff. He kept giving us more discounts. He said, you guys just gonna keep buying like this? He said, I can knock off, I'll throw in two of these and three of these. And we said, great, great. It was just a flurry of joy of furnishing a whole wing. Uh, and then at the end he said, and um, uh, we have a special, if you buy this and this you get so many DVDs. Um, and so he took us and there were all these DVDs and and I just looked at the DVDs and I said okay we'll take 15 of the these DVDs and he said you want the same what why don't you want all I said no this one is this one is the one I want it's the one in my heart it was time travelers wife I take 15 of time travelers wife <laughs> he's like okay so we're throwing in so I, I was like passing out time traveler's wife to all my friends, you know, this and this. But you'll remember, if any of you have seen time traveler's wife, that he's traveling all around, he's moving around time a lot. But he can, he can always witness what's occurring, but he can't change things. Like his mother, you know, dying in a car crash. He, he can see the scene many, many times in his time traveling, but he can't change it, even though his father's like, well, what good is this ability if you can't save your mother? Because his father was going through a lot of depression. Literally, his interpretation of losing her, his wife, was very, very depressing. But there it is again, you know, it, even if you could view, remotely view different aspects of time and seemingly move your consciousness to different places and different times, if the script is written, and all you can really do is change your mind about it, learn how to view it with the Holy Spirit, learn how to view it from a simultaneous perspective, and that's really where you want to put your effort. You want to do your mind training, your prayers, all at that moment, mm -hmm. which is really this moment. Yeah. It's, if everything is simultaneous and not linear, then you can bring your full attention, your full attentiveness to just, like that could be the prayer of your heart, like show me the world Holy Spirit, the way you see it. Show me the, the essence of the nature of time, that it's simultaneous and that it's more than parallel universes, it's all happening at the same time. Show me that before this world just disappears and I'm back in the Kingdom of Heaven. If this is the gateway, then show it to me from that perspective. And that's where, like Nikita is saying, the premonitions, all those things, those psychic abilities, you know, in the end, you want to let them go too, because they won't serve. They don't serve your peace of mind. And the joy, they don't serve. They don't serve to the joy. There's no joy in that. It's like there's some kind of like safety and control, and still like knowing, mm. 
like wanting to know what's going to happen. Like, okay, spirit, show me at least something. You know, I had linear. It's all linear, and it's it just doesn't. You have to mm -hmm. kind of like. They may be helpful to open up the mind to something greater, something beyond five senses. But then at some point, that has to be let go of because it's the joy is much. It's much. It's not linear. Like it's it's so. Like it becomes a, like these abilities, they become a block to really to the to the experience of this present moment. It's like there really isn't nothing, and and the thing is, it's so exciting, and maybe it's even threatening to ego when it's like, well, I, I'm gonna let go of this linear thinking, and I wouldn't even know where I am. How am I gonna walk, like walk about? And I have been having these experiences that I don't know what day it is. I don't know how old I am, and it's like who is who. And uh, like when I got here, and I was like, oh my god, but I don't know what's going on. But I like it. <laughs> I like it. That's all I know. I don't even know how. To, like I don't even know how helpful it is. But the joy is so strong that I'm like, this is my favorite experience. I like it. That's all I know. Like that's that's all I know. That is just so full it's so it's just something else and it's just like really permission to let it to let it be like to just really step into that if nothing else and see how everything just like not even not even see nothing it's just like be there when it happens so yeah and that you can't you cannot have without uh, with psychic abilities or premonitions or wanting to know something wanting to know some kind of a future that's not a place that's not a state of mind where there's past and the future it's beyond the near far beyond but yeah and it's not threatening at all actually it's actually really light and joyous and uh, yeah yeah so you've seen the movie Joe versus the volcano and uh, Joe is, thinks he's dying and he's sent on a journey, and uh, Meg Ryan is there quite a bit, it's in different forms, showing up and playing different characters. But basically, she's she's showing up there, and basically, there's there's Tom Hanks, there's uh, Meg Ryan doing in their characters on the top of this, on the edge of this volcano, and basically, um, he thinks it's going to be something that will heroic, that he's going to do something important and heroic with his life. He was a former firefighter. He was used to jumping into flames before. And um, this was you know, for Wapani Wu the, to appease the, the god of this island and to save the people and, and so forth. But anyway, he's getting to a point and suddenly it turns ultimately very metaphysical where he's up there and he's ready to say goodbye to the Megan Ryan character and she does something that just surprises him so much. He's so sure that he's just going to jump off into this volcano and uh, she comes to him and she gives him a marriage proposal uh, right when he's ready to jump. He's really taken aback. He's surprised that she would she would say marry me. That he's, he immediately says, I, wait a minute, I don't know. And she says, you're going to have to love and honor me for like 60 seconds? Is that, <laughs> is that a problem here? You know, she, put, she gets, puts it in a, in a way that he's like, oh. It, he, he, it eases his mind. He has commitment fears. He has major commitment fears like most human beings. And, and so when the marriage proposal comes, marry me, he wants to deflect it. But then she says, you know, love and honor me for 60 seconds. Okay, so he goes with it. And that's when it gets very deep, because then they go, they're both right up there on the edge of the volcano. And, you know, he says to her, you know, what are we asking for here? And she says, a miracle. So now it's getting even deeper. You know, first they've had the marriage commitment, now it's, they're really asking for a miracle, which is what the marriage is all about. It's not about the volcano, it's not about whether they jump or not, it's not about anything in form. And basically she says, nobody knows anything. She says, let's just jump. 
And that's how you get into this state of mind. You have to, for a moment, just a moment, get into that nobody knows anything. Nobody knows anything. You have to go away from thinking that you know something, or that people know something, or that the world has taught you something, or anything. She just says, nobody knows anything. She really is extending her hand out and saying, nobody knows anything. You know, we'll just, we're going to jump. And, and then symbolically in the movie, when they finally do hold hands and step off of the edge of the volcano and drop right into the volcano, symbolically the two little bodies come shooting out with a trail of smoke behind them and they're thrown out back into the ocean, which is kind of an, a symbol, you know, a, instead of burning mm. in molten lava, which is what the world would say would happen if yeah. you jump off into a volcano. It's the exact opposite of what the world would say. They're literally blown out before they can hit the, the molten lava, all the way out back into the ocean. Ocean, symbol of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You know, vast, vast. vast. Not hot at all. It's quite cool and Pretty delicious. <laughs> and they splash out into that. And, and that's like the symbol of if you're willing to trust, nobody knows anything, make the commitment, hold hands, we're going for something very deep, very high, then, then you are putting yourself in a position where you're, you're ready, ready for an experience. Just simply ready. Yeah. I love it. Like, I love that feeling of just, it's so simple. Because, you know, it's a journey, you might even, like, there's been a lot of talks, and it's almost like, you got to be ready, okay, spirit? <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Onward, not, Christians. Right, it's, like, it's, not, it's not that at all. Like, it's not that at all. It's just so, like, like it's so obvious, it's so light, it's just like, I'm, and you don't know what's going on, who, like, who are you going to be with, who is going, where are you going, but it's like, I'm just ready. It's like, how are you? I'm just simply ready. Just like it's and it's so joyous. It's like I'm just ready. Like it's just so beautiful. Like not and then there's nothing else to add, nothing else to say, and it's and there, once again the reflections that are like right back, like you meet the reflections right away that are telling you, I uh I'm ready, I'm just ready. And so it's just you just yeah. Amazing to even, uh, it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and to be joined and nothing but that, that is also the prayer of my heart. Like, that's where the true joining is. Like, the, nothing but that. Nothing, like, no other shared agreements, nothing. I let it all fall away just to be ready, just to be joined in that purity of just like, I am ready. I'm just, I'm just simply ready. Yeah. yeah. In the state of the miracle, all you can do is, is just behold. We went to see X-Men, and after we watched X-Men one time, Jason was sitting next to me, and he said, which character am I? Which character am I? Which one of the X-Men characters am I? And I said, well, oh, you're Wolverine. He said, Wolverine? Wolverine? How can I be Wolverine? I said, well, at the end, the very end, he, he sees Jean. And he sees Jean, and he's like, you're, you're here! That was, he's almost, he can't really believe that, uh, of course there's so many X-Men movies, there's a lot between Wolverine and Jean, but in this particular scene, it's the first time we see Jean. Jean's just there. He comes around the corner and there is Jean. Jean is glowing. And he goes, like, you're here! Almost in disbelief that Jean is there. And she's like, of course I'm here. You know, very much matter of fact, you know. And then he's just ready to reach out and touch Jean, and then <laughs> the hand comes out. It's Scott, this is a Scott, or it's the Cyclops oh guy. So, there he goes, oh, something's never changed. But all he can do is, he's only meant to behold Jean for the very first time. That's, right. yeah. that's what we're talking about. It's, it's all things made new. He even has to let go of this feeling like, like he can't believe Jean is there. She's like, of course I'm here. And that's that, of course, everything, we're all here. 
we're all here in the unified moment, we're all here in the present moment. And, and there's no surprise in that, it's just the beholding. But as soon as he tries to do something from the past, like reach out and touch Jean, then the hand comes in, like, no. <laughs> like just behold it, just experience it, just appreciate it, don't try to possess it, you know. To, as soon as you try to possess it, then, then you lose it. You lose the experience of mm. that we're all here together. Right. Then yeah. it turns. Then it suddenly turns specific. It's almost like there's Gene and there's the whole universe there. And then when the hand comes out, it's like yeah. no. And you. Right. You too. Oh. <laughs> suddenly there's <laughs> suddenly there's a Wolverine. <laughs> oh, yeah. like, as soon as as soon as he sees Gene as something special or different, then then it's back to there's a Wolverine that's special and different, and then it's a lockdown. Mm. You know, that loses it all. So it's, it's amazing. There's amazing movies coming to us and scenes that are really like, yeah. 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 All to support the mind with that there is nothing but the present moment. It, like the X-Men. I said that there's never been such depth with, uh, with those movies, in those movies. But then again, I'm like, of course, there's never been such depth in the mind. You know, yeah. it's just, it's all such a pure reflection of the mind, where my, the mind is going. And it's all back to the present moment, back to the present moment, back to really uh, gratitude, just simply gratitude, and then the extension of it, and uh, healed perspective, that the past is gone and the future is not real, and that's all that's all there is, is the present moment, and nothing else is defined. It's not defined. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it's like, it's funny, I just remember from X-Men again, uh, I think uh, one of the characters asks him, Wolverine, will I, ma oh, will I make it in the future? <laughs> and he goes, no. <laughs> 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 You're not gonna make it. And, and he goes, but something along, like I wouldn't quote, but something along the line, well, we can stay here. Like this is, this is what's going to determine the, pr the future, the present. Now we can change it all. Like there's no need. In the linear time, none of us are going to make it. It's like, are we going to make it now? Mm -hmm. But that's not where we live. That's not yeah. real. So, that's the real Yeah, yeah. We're not going to make back. it in the future, but yeah. we're all fine right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah, no, what's going to happen in the future? Nothing. It's death. Like, nothing. You know, like, it's here. Just go back where you belong. Yeah, this, this, the sleep says the future has not yet happened, but, but, you know, it's, if you're going to accept that, then you'd have to accept that the past has not happened either. You know, you really have to have a tr complete transformation of consciousness. Because the belief that it has not yet happened, but will happen, mm. is, is hypothetical. You know, that there actually will be a future. That's very hypothetical. Yeah. And we're seeing that hypothetical thinking, you know, is, is not God's will <coughs> for us. So. We weren't created as a being that can think hypothetically, and yet that's all the human experience is about. If I do this, then that. Mm -hmm. And planning for the future, and even on the spiritual journey, you know, oh, I'm going to make it someday, I'm going to, in the future mm -hmm. I'll be enlightened, and it just goes round and round and round and round, and then the mind just imagines all kinds of scenes and scenarios, and it's, it's just all hypothetical. Yeah. And then the experience of, of simultaneity is that, that everything is simultaneous and that, that we don't have to think like that anymore. Because that was where the guilt came in. Hypothetical attractions, hypothetical repulsions, hypotheticals. Still, the present moment doesn't have any of those. 
It's really contentment. The present moment is, is full of contentment. Absolute contentment. Mm. No one can truly be restless right now. Mm. They're just always remembering restlessness or anticipating restlessness, but they're not truly restless. Mm. They're content. The, con the mind is content. So, what an adventure. Yeah. There's not many more words we can put in since we've already gone past well. We can maybe have JP take us take us into the abstract again. <laughs> we started there. <laughs> and we end there.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.